All the believers were one in heart and mind. No one considered their possessions to be their own, but they shared everything in common. Or something close to that is what Acts chapter 4 verse 32 says. This is our great verse of the day and a source of great hope, I think, because it offers us a unique kingdom vision. See, this is the second time, actually, that the author of Acts has described this sort of behavior as being a distinctive of the early Jesus community. So we would do well to pay attention. The way that the church, the way that believers, followers of Jesus, steward our our time, our talent, and our resources is one of the things that we can do to bear witness to the love of God and ultimately to the source of generosity, God himself. But it strikes at the heart of something that is really near and dear to our culture, which is this idea of ownership that, hey, you work for what's yours. You got to get what's yours um, and that you're in competition with other people. This scarcity mentality is what drives so much of the division and of the pain that tears our communities apart. So what might it look like, church, if you and I were not governed by fear and scarcity, but were a people known to be generous? You are known as a generous church. The way that we serve and resource our partners locally and abroad is a powerful testament to that. The benevolence fund that we have to care for the least of those in our community is another way that we do that. But the challenge to you and I is to ask, hey, in our everyday life, are we caring about a stewardship mentality? Do we actually believe that everything that we have is a gift from God and that our joyful response gets to be to ask and to seek his heart for how we can steward those gifts, that wealth, social capital, whatever it may be, wisely, and to give him glory, to point people towards the source of our joy, of our security, which is Jesus? I confess, I don't always do that. Uh, and there was a period of my life where I was also a bad steward of my financial resources. And I found myself um, with some credit card debt and really stressed. And uh, then I found myself in some car trouble. So I had a friend who will remain nameless, but did this extraordinary act that really just blew my mind. Um, they had an extra car and they had been letting me use it and then decided that, okay, well, um, I'll sell it to you for a really good price, like way below market value. But Joseph, you got to put together a payment plan and you got to figure out, okay, how, when are you going to be able to pay me back? So I finally, you know, um, gritting my teeth, did it, sat down, made a bit of a budget, realized, you know, what it would take for how I could eventually pay this person back and um, showed it to them and wrote them a check for what I could as the kind of first part of it. Then this incredible thing happened. They just smiled and they took the check and they, they crossed out car payment and they wrote credit card debt on it and they handed it back to me and they said, hey, I wanna give this to you as a gift. Um, now, I still expect you to live by the budget, the plan that you have put in place to be a better steward of your resources, but um, I wanna bless you because this is how God has blessed me. I mean, what a humbling and a mind blowing. This person just gave me a car and more than gave me a car, they gave me a chunk of change to knock out some of the debt that I incurred because of my poor stewardship. What would it be like if we were people like that church? That that's how we were known as Christians is that we were canceling the debts of other people and that we were moving in radical and gen generosity towards those in our community, whether they belong to our church or not. That might be what it means to be the people of God. Church, be blessed today.